Hello everyone, I am Gander of the Gaming Clan, Vato Clan, and I am bringing you a long lost series of videos today uh, coming from the Four Players Liga tournament that was held on the Europe West server for League of Legends Dominion. Uh, this was back in 2012? Uh, 4PL 2012-25. Uh, originally this was cast by commentator Recycled Goods, and the reason that it has taken so long to get this on to the internet is because it was recorded using the Speaks codec and the audio and video uh, for it were, they didn't just didn't match like any settings that I could find. It's been a pain in the butt to work with it. I finally found a solution to it, uh, which was pointed out to me and made me feel really dumb. I could just play the thing back in a video player and record it. Where is my brain at? So, very long overdue, enjoy uh, these videos. Uh, commentary is by Recycled Goods. This is from the Four Players Liga Tournament. Uh, this is uh, 2012 number 45. And let's, let's get into business here. Howdy folks, we're just about to head into the first game. This is the first game of 4PL Dominion Tournament, week 45. This will be between Team GT5 and Thai Boys Incoming, my apologies, just had something to eat. Just going to get my breath back a moment. We do have Ross Kazan subbing this week for Thai Boys Incoming. Generally a support player. Dominus Arts, Bot Laner, SPG Neo style. Can play Liesrael and a couple of carries. Knights typically plays Bruises and Bone Crusher is well known for his tank play. Leona in particular. This will be an interesting game to see. If you've got any questions, any queries or anything at all, feel free to ask them in the Twitch chat or the EU West Dominion channel. And I will answer what I can. Looks like we will be going in soon. On EU West, we don't have chat bands as it stands, so it will just be the tournament draft style bands. Six bands in there, three for each side, with standard picks and bands as with the tournament. Any questions at all? Oh, it is Team GT5 and Thai Boys Incoming. I don't think Team GT5 have ever played before though, so we'll have to see how they do. Good luck to them. Hopefully everyone has fun, and hopefully the viewers have fun watching this tournament, folks. Any requests, any questions, anything at all, feel free to ask them. Hi Zamp, how you doing? Dominion Pro is a 4PL admin in chat, so if you do have any queries, feel free to ask them on the Twitch chat, and I'm sure he can help and answer. Hopefully we don't have server issues like we did yesterday, and we should be fine. Just smoking at the minute, my apologies folks. First game of the night, hopefully we do a good job of it and hopefully everyone gets to enjoy themselves. This is the round of 16 game between Thai Boys Incoming and Team GT5. Team GT5 do seem to be a new team and they are the team on the left, meaning first pick and first ban. Um, in this week's tournament we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 teams in this week's tournament. Although it seems Seize the Day may have forfeited already. Or they got stumped very, very fast. As both Godzilla 5 and Seize the Day had a wild card. But Godzilla 5 is now in the semi-finals already. Meaning they've got RP guaranteed already. And it's 10 minutes into the tournament. Credit to them. Good to see it. Okay, we've just got to wait for Knights to return so we can start the stream and keep everyone entertained. I'm just got to wait it out. Just post the link in here. If you've got any friends that might be interested in Dominion, feel free to link them up. Anyone on NA, I would appreciate a posting. Oh, bum out. My effort one to one offline in a moment, but it's back on. Sorted. Um, a post in the Domain Dominion room would be appreciated. Well, not required. And we're just waiting for the Knights to return at the minute. Hope <laughs> hopefully we don't have any of the server issues we had yesterday. If anyone doesn't know, the EUS servers did go down, login servers and everything else. People couldn't start games, meaning the tournament has been postponed to today. And after my stream, I think only Snake will be streaming on NA servers on the same stream. Now we've just got to wait for Nice to return. 
Um, any issues with the screen, feel free to mention them. Any issues at all, we'll try and make sure they're fixed. Um, if there's any lag, I would appreciate notification of it. Hello, Mark Harris, whoever you are, welcome to the 4PL Week 45 Minion Tournament. Should start soon. We're waiting for one player to arrive, and this is the first game in the round of 16 between Tie Boys Incoming and Team GT5. Team GT5 are on the left and do seem to be a new team, and Tie Boys Inc. are usually finalists. So I'm not quite sure how this game will go. Hopefully, it'll be a fun one and an interesting one. And if you've got any friends with any interest in Dominion, feel free to post a link. They might appreciate a bit of a tournament. Uh, uh. Well, no, one of the viewers seems to be having issues watching. Here for the viewers, so any questions or anything at all, feel free to ask them in the Twitch chat and I will answer everything I can. To the best of my knowledge, I have played in quite a few tournaments, so I generally know my stuff. And we'll be about to answer any questions. Okay, it seems we will be starting now, going into the pick and ban phase. On E West, there are no chat bans, so every pick and ban is in the chat and uh, in the game itself. This is tournament draft, and teams are entitled to 10 minutes of pause break, break, break as well, I do believe. Any queries, anything at all, feel free to ask them. We do have Castling coming out as the first ban. Very mobile, lots of CC, can build tanky, and doesn't have the gold restrictions like it does on Summoner's Rift with the ease of farm. We do have a Yorick ban coming out as well. Very strong bot laner, stomps a lot of matchups. Scales quite well, and is generally not nice to go against. Pantheon ban, very, very strong early game, quite mobile, good mid game as well. Does fall off a little bit late game, but his early game presence is very strong. Jack's ban coming out. Pretty difficult to start once you go once you start snowballing. <clears throat> and Gangplank on Dominion, not the strongest of picks really at all. He's kind of deemed as a low tier champion. He just doesn't really scale well enough into any role late game. Or mid game or early game. A little bit of poke, his ultimate's quite useful, but he's generally quite flawed overall. Final ban coming out from Team GT5 is Malphite, very good against auto attackers, strong initiation, high mobility, and a very, very good tank. Riven is a very strong bot laner, actually. Occasionally see a tart, but she has a lot of favourable matchups bot lane. And we do have a new new ban coming out, quite useful with attack speed, champions top, but also a very good stall lane bot lane. First pick, Vay. That, that's quite an odd pick. It's got the, it, It's a strong pick by late game, but its flaws are a weak early to mid game. And I'm not sure if it's really first pick material, as people won't really pick it up too soon. But we'll have to see, Jace has been left open. And with his crit scaling, his W increases his damage by 130% for every hit. And gives him 300% attack speed, meaning he hits the attack speed cap. That's pretty much everything. And does as he pleases with you. 130% damage, attack speed cap for free hits. And crit, uh, crit damage scaling on Infinity Edge does mean he can take someone out in one combo, pretty much. And we do also have the Diana pick coming out from Dominus Arts. He's usually a bot laner, probably will be on Diana as well. Strong lane, doesn't really have many issues. Wukong pick, Ghost and Exhaust, questionable. But Revive is very strong, especially with the Mastery, as it allows you to get where required, when required, and contribute quite a bit, quite a bit of extra stuff. Ramus was seen as strong in the early phases of Dominion, but then phased out. For a tank, he's quite single target oriented, and backdooring can be countered by mobilising around mid, ready to counter it. Does look like we'll get the Elise pick out as well. Ezreal's a very strong carry. With Jace, though, that would mean they're quite a D-heavy top lane. We'll have to see how that goes from. But he's got a lot of poke. Global map presence with his ultimate and is quite strong. Udyr, I'd expect bot lane. Does have a few reasonable matchups. I know NA like him. Wukong, forgot to mention, the ultimate's game-breaking in team fights. Very, very strong. But his dueling ability is not the best. But besides that, he's quite good. He does have armor penetration on his Q as well, which will be coming quite handy for Vayne. Does seem we will have a lease picked. This will be the first Elise we've seen in the tournament setting. This will be interesting to see. Reasonable burst, does have a stern, has quite a bit of mobility with a E in spider mode, can jump around as you please in a fight. With a tanky build, has quite high base damage. We do have Maokai coming out, so he could be the bot lane, he could be the top lane. We'd probably be either him or Udyr bot. We'll have to see. Garrison and heal, no revive, kind of questionable, but we'll have to see how it is. Oh, my apologies. 
I should have had the summoner blockers up, folks. Genuinely sorry. It is the first game of the first stream of the day for me. We do have a Nidley pick as well. AP Nidley got a bit of poke top. Traps are quite useful, but generally a bit underwhelming for the team fights. AD Nid is an okay bot laner as well. Have to see how it goes from. Hopefully do pretty well with it, but I'm not too sure in regards to Nidley, Udir, and an early Vayne pick. Vayne doesn't have much babysit here. Could be a flaw. I mean, she could be shut down and locked out pretty fast. And at high level play, you don't really see much of Ramus. He, he's just too single target oriented. And the taunt and the defense curl are good resistance wise and shutting someone down, but it's not really long enough. We do have Janna pick coming out from Ross Chasm. He is known for playing a good Janna. Good Janna indeed. Um, RP. Fourth place wins 800 RP. Third place 1,600. Second place 2,400. And first place is 3,200 RP and um, trophy rise. Triumphant rise. They are the rewards for the first place. And we do have Janna locked in. This will be the picks completed. I will now turn off the summoner blockers properly. We do see that Team GT5 only has three revi uh, two revives, which will pump behind quite heavily in the top fight. And if bottom doesn't have a revive, they suffer heavily from a gank. Very heavily, as it means that you've got, uh, you're out of action for a while whilst they can free cap your turret. We do see a very, very strong matchup coming out from... Thai boys in coming though with uh, Diana, Ezreal, Jace all being deemed top tier picks. Ezreal lots of poke, pretty good mid early to mid game. Jace very very strong scaling into late game and a lot of poke again. Diana deemed a top tier bot laner, very strong. Oh the RP giveaway, my apologies folks, the RP giveaway is from yesterday's stream, Feedski stream. I am posting on, I am on the Dominate Dominion stream at the minute and because he's not online at the minute he hasn't updated the header. My apologies folks. Oh, that's slightly misleading to anyone coming in. This is the 4PR weekly tournament, not High Halo Dominion with the Fiski. My apologies. I am Recycle Goods, and I am your caster for the day. Usually a bot laner on EU West. Played quite a lot of tournaments. Won, won one, second place quite a lot as well. Got my fair share of RP and experience at top level. So, any Dominion based insights or questions, feel free to ask them in the chat, and I will answer to the best of my knowledge. I am expecting Diana to be bot lane for Thai Boys Incoming. I am expecting either Rudeer or Maokai to be bot lane for Team GT5. Maokai is typically a stall lane, but doesn't really scale into late particularly well. And without revive, it will put him behind if he is ganked or killed. Katarina does scale well into late game, but her early to mid game is atrocious. She kind of struggles. She's got a little bit of poke, but yeah. Not really deemed a top tier competitive pick. CC does shut her down quite hard as well. Just about to start. Hopefully it's up soon. Just post a link again. Singed is okay. He gets a bit of use on NA by a couple of people. But his early game isn't the greatest, and he does suffer from chitin in the early levels, but he scales quite well into late and can be quite an annoyance. This is the first game of the 4 pl tournament, week 45, between Thai Boys Incoming and Team GT5. Team GT5 are on the left, do seem to be a new team, not really running much revive, so probably not the most Dominion experience. Thai Boys Incoming are generally finalists, regular high performers. They do have a sub this week in Rosgasm, but he is known for his... Janna play, so hopefully this should be should be good to view for everybody. And in one minute the game will start. Any other questions, anything at all, feel free to ask them in the Twitch chat and I will answer everything to the best of my knowledge. I am Recycle Goods, your caster for the day as well. 50 seconds to go, any questions at all, I'm free to answer for another 50 seconds pretty much. And then we'll be heading into the game, the game does start at 1 minute 20 or 40, I can never remember, I do believe it's 1 minute 20. Um, and we'll be starting pretty soon. Heimer, Heimer, people playing bot lane, but carries on a lot of bot laners do crush him very hard. Top lane he can defend a turret okay, but in most situations Zyra's deemed far stronger. Heimer's not very mobile, he 
not really that good a defender. People can kill his turrets and he's got very low base resistances, meaning he can be dived quite easily by a balanced team comp with a good tank and a good bruiser. <coughs> We will be heading into the game, should start soon, and we'll get ready for the proper casting. Any other questions, I am still free to answer anything at all you've got, any queries. And 1 minute 20 will be the starting point for the game. Just got to wait for this to load properly now, and we'll be ready to go. Any stream issues, anything else at all, feel free to tell me, but things should be running okay at the minute. We do have the honour advantage going to tie boys at the minute, and we do have four skins to... Three skins, they've got a skin advantage too at the minute, you know, skins do, don't grant stats, but that moral boost of having a skin, oh no, my mistake, three skins to three skins, ah, oh, no Elise skin or J skin, although both characters do only have one skin at the minute, and the Elise skin, in my own personal opinion, isn't really the best of skins, but that is my own personal opinion there. Got to be heading into the game very soon, Team GT5 is Team Blue at the minute, and on the red team we will have... Tie boys incoming, regular fine list, and good team. I am rolling smokes at the minute, rope drink. And I'm not inhaling at the minute, how dare you? I'm waiting until the end of the game for this one. <coughs> Indeed, they do have a Pulse Fire Ezreal, quite a good skin. Although you do find a lot of the Dominion players do have Pulse Fire Ezreal with the regular tournament RP that people get. And we do have quite a few Ezreal players. Usually you would see SPG Neo start on the Ezreal, but with him playing Elise, one of his newer champions of choice since uh, conception, Bonecrusher will be picking up Ezreal, and he is known for playing quite a few roles, although he is generally the tank player. We do have Ross Gazman Janna, which he's quite known for, and for anyone just come in, this is the 4 PL Weekly Dominion, Dominion Tournament, Week 45. This is the round of 16 game between Team GT5 on the left, Bokes on Nidley, Trial Natsu on Wukong, Delta Astria on Udyr, Trial Mikuno on Maokai and Kamaru on Vayne, and on the right hand side we do have Dominus Arts on Diana, we do have SPG Neo Style on Elise, we have Bonecrusher 93 on Ezreal, we do have Knights on Jace, and Ross Chasm on Janna. And that is Ty Boy's incoming. And Mumu is quite strong, but after his AP ratio nerfs, his damage has fell considerably. NA players still value him very highly, but Leona and Maokai are typically valued higher on the tank list on EU West. Let's have a close up of the saplings before the game starts. Do look like little, little totems there. And we are about to start. 10 seconds to go. Just got to get ready for the casting. In terms of items, we do see a Kindle gem coming out on Janna. That will probably be built into a either Zeke's or a Shirelia's, or she could go for both. Do have quite a few auto attackers top, so they will get quite a bit of a benefit from the Zeke's Herald. And bot lane, we do have Diana versus Udia. Udia is very good for making a stalemate of a lane, but Udia has started Merc Treads, which will put him behind in trades for quite a bit early on. We do seem to have more poke, potentially, coming out from Ty Boys Inc. on the right-hand side with an Ezreal, a Janna, and a Jace. Lots of poke between them. Wukong split off from his team, went in for an early engager, but did eat more harass in return from Ezreal and Jace. Jace does land an EQ combo there, bringing Wukong to around half health. He is a bit low for an engage now. We do see a W coming out as well and dropping Vayne with a bit of extra poke. But Knights has been split off from his team. Wukong has been taken out there with Elise grappling on and finishing the job off. With Ezreal getting the last hit, the stun does miss, but they are in a 3v4 situation at the minute without revive. They can push the advantage whilst one caps and proceed to fight. They do have the third cap here as well. Jam does land the knock upon Maokai here, meaning that he will should be taken out by Jason and Lee's here. Although Baron Crush does land the finishing hits with skill shots whilst he enters the bush. Bot lane, Diana does seem to be out pushing Udyr, which should be the case as he started Merc Treads. He should lose most trades. He has gone Phoenix Lance to make sure he maximises his push. One point in everything at the minute. That's... Certainly different. It's not really excelling in any particular area. The stun is landed. Garrison has been used, meaning SPG Nielstone does want to back out. Extra attack speed and splash damage from the turret there. Udyr is going deep, but does lack mana at the minute, so can't follow it up. Tram, that's who did come in behind on Wukong there, but at least does manage to get the raffle off and jump, jump to Udyr. Back out to safety. Misses the stun there, so doesn't get much. Nidalee is trying to backdoor, but Ross Castleman, Janna, and Knights on Jace will be more than enough to chase it down and finish it off. Quite an early swap into combo mode there, but more than enough burst with the, our additional damage and everything else, just to finish it off. Hello any viewers, just in the downtime, we do have 
The round of 16 game for the £4 Dominion Tournament, week 45, between Team GT5 and Thai Boys in command on the right. Wukong is invading the enemy jungle alone at the minute, trying to go for a back cap, but at least did get vision on him. Does check the burst with the W to make sure he's not coming up on the flank, and is there to deal with him and prevent any further back caps. And top, we do have Vayne trying to farm with Maokai there to provide a peel in case of any real trouble, but with an edge reel, a Jace and a Janna, there's more than enough counter push to deal with anything they can throw at him. Now it does eat a bit of sapling damage there, not particularly much, but does get the engage onto Trial Nazi, doing a bit of extra damage. We do have an AP Nidalee coming out top lane, which will mean she's got a bit of poke, gone for CDR boots, so not the highest damage in the spears, but going for regular spear harass. Quite good against people that are sitting on the turret, does have a bit, Diana is out pushing down there, has got half health on the bottom, half tur eh, bottom turret there, but trying to come around on the flank and go for a kill. And we do have Wukong invading alone. Janna's shield on Lee does grant a little bit of extra attack damage, meaning she does get a bit of further damage there. Does eat a full spear with a trap up there, that does reduce magic resist and armor by quite a bit. Higher Dominus Arts, um, meaning she did take more damage from that. She does land a stun there on Tron Natsu, meaning they can get a bit of further harass and Tron Natsu won't be able to chase on the engage. We do have Ezreal and Knight potentially out of position there. Not around to stop the back out there by Nidalee. Perhaps they didn't notice, perhaps it's... Well, it is the first game of the tournament. You've got to get into the game properly. Nidalee does look to get to, set to get a full back cap off it. No, she stopped capping. Press Q. Not quite sure why. Does add length for a little bit of a delay, but before... Well, as she manages to cap it, this point is capped by Creeps and Jace. I mean, it is a turret exchange there. Jace does get a bit of extra poke down on Vayne there, but he is slightly out of position if Maokai were to jump on him. Ezra is now back to keep him covered. And Diana has beat Udyr bot lane and has went for a first push. Wukong is there and Diana doesn't really want to take that fight with very little mana. She could possibly delay or go shot. Yet we'll be going for the delay with the Q, prevent them recapping the point. And just for anyone that's curious, neutralised points do, uh, what you call it, they do grant sight on stealth targets so that this, that clone was visible there by Diana. Ezra is proceeding to carry on poking Malka off the turret. He is tower diving. Garrison has been used. Malka at uh, Bone Crusher does eat a full spear there, but Ross Chasm does have the ultimate there. Grant a little bit of health and a three man hurricane does mean that the chase should be stopped. SPG Neostar does just quite miss his stun. This is a four cap at the minute by the way, meaning that the points are ticking down rather fast for the opposing side. EQ combo from Jace does devastate Wukong and Vayne and in hammer mode he comes up and cleans up Maokai and Vayne. Wukong can't really fight against the group on his own. Nidalee is still there waiting to try and throw spears but Spider does grant vision from Elise and she doesn't quite land the stun there but is delaying so as to try and grant Knight's time to cap. Nidalee does miss the spear there, not quite hitting at full range. We do see Wukong ult coming off on one target. Less damage than not using the ult but it does grant extra movement speed and the knock off so he did just get out there. But the EQ combo from Knight's there with the Storm Shield buff did polish off the Wukong. Just zoning out Nidalee here at the minute, shouldn't be able to be taken down with the extra stats granted by being in hammer mode. I mean, at least doesn't quite get a full cap off, however, as Malkai does come to support, but bot lane is the objective, so Janna is capping that, whilst Udi has been killed by Diana and Co. Ezreal has gone to cover mid, but the objective does grant 20 damage to the opposition's health points, and 10% damage boost for everyone on your team. It's it's the first game of a tournament, to be fair, with seeding. The, the, the first games aren't usually the closest of games, and Team GT5 are a new entry, so probably not particularly experienced in Dominion. We do see Janna managing to land a double slow, uh, double knock up there, keep him out of range, and with the sweeper, does get the vision onto Wukong. Just so they know what's going on. Ezreal, Janna, and Elise are here to counter any push that's tried. Ma uh, Maokai is going in a line, but does see Bone Crusher on Ezreal closing the gap with the Storm Shield. Oh, no, with the Janna Shield. That Mystic Shot does do quite a bit of damage. We have Nidalee here trying to get the back cap, but Jace is there to deal with her in time. That's quite an early spot to hammer mode, but. Manchester's going to phase slow off. Mm, phage. Oh. And does manage to get the phase slow off there. And does look set to take out Nidalee. She gets the heal off, but he finishes through with an EQ combo. Udir is trying to close the gap on Dominus Arts, but he lands his Q onto Vayne. Ult's in. Or well, is refreshed if you land it on someone that does have Moonlight on them. And it does look like this will be a 5 cap and GG. This is the round of 16 game between Team GT5 and Tie Boys Incoming. And it does look like Team and Tie Boys Incoming have taken it already. Just going to take about a minute for the game to finish ticking down, and we'll have to see what the next game of stream will be. That'll be the round of eight game, though some teams have got a wild card through the first round, so it'll probably be these against one of those.
Dana is staying there to zone the Malkine, prevent any further caps. Edril and Janna are delaying Wu Kong there, just holding the point longer than the ultimate is used, but he was taking turret damage and Janna here does keep Bone Crusher on Ezreal at full health. Nearly is trying to go for a back cap, but at least with pretty high mobility there, does land a stun and manages to close the gap, dropping Nidalee down very fast. Ezreal does come in to try and clean up the kill. Vayne is going for a back door, which they aren't aware of at the minute, but I don't think it's nearly enough to stop the loss. And Diana and Jace with their poke have managed to hold off any real abuse there. SPG and Elsar and Ezreal are there to stop Wukong from getting the point back, and this will be GG. The first game of the tournament has went to Thai Boys Incoming. They are regular finalists, and the new team are a new team, so it's kind of to be expected. Quite a one-sided game, but it's the first game of the tournament, and hopefully we'll see more balanced games as it goes on. We'll now go to a plain screen and get some music on until the next game starts. I will get the stream back up as soon as we're in the next lobby. Indeed, they give it a go. There is always a chance to get some free RP from fourth or third place if you don't think you can go for the first. So it's never quite worth not trying. Always worth giving it a shot. The tournament is free to enter, and on every Sunday it was postponed to today through server issues, however. And I will be back as soon as the next lobby's up. I should get an invite shortly. See you all soon.